to the present day. It's in <coughs> technology was right. <coughs> it was enough. Oh, hell, go from start again. Hi everyone. <laughs> Nineteen fifty-four is a significant year for two industries. One of them is the automotive industry, where we see Mercedes-Benz launch the world's first supercar, the 300 SL. But also in 1954, we see Bell Industries launch the world's first commercially viable solar panel. Now, when you compare both of these industries side by side, and you look at the motor car from 1954 to the present day, it's unrecognizable. But that's not the same for solar panels. So for about 60 years, development was largely static as demand was relatively low. That's changed in the last 10 years. And one company that stands out is an Australian designer and manufacturer of solar panels called REA PTY. Now REA have a product which they sell in the UK called the Fusion 2 solar panel. And today we're gonna go and see the latest version. This is a 440 watt bifacial panel, which is an N-type cell construction, but it also features something called HJT. Now HJT means it's a heterojunction cell, and what that means is the three layers of silicon wafers that all combine to give you the maximum efficiency for your solar panels. Now today, we're down in Essex, and we're gonna go and view someone's property where we're installing some of these panels on their roof, and we're also going to meet another YouTube channel, a guy called EV Man. We're actually doing this job for his brother, and this is going to be the first property in the UK where we're installing these 440 watt panels. And we're going to show you how these are different and how you can install these on your property. So we've just arrived here on site. Uh, the team are currently installing the roofing mounting system. We'll take a look at that in a second. And as we mentioned earlier, not only are we installing the 440 watt panels here, we've actually paired them with something different. So normally heatable installs will only ever install the end phase microinverters. However, we are bringing a slightly more affordable solution to the market by pairing these high performance panels, not to microinverters, but to hybrid inverters. So this property here is having eight panels installed. We're gonna connect that to a Give Energy 3.6 Generation 3 hybrid inverter and there's no battery on this job. Now the benefit of installing a hybrid inverter rather than a string inverter is if later down the line the client wants to add a battery, that inverter is ready to go to just simply plug a battery into the DC side of the actual inverter itself. So it's quite a flexible solution. Again, if you're looking to do your install in stages, so you want to add the panels first or a battery first and then add panels, this sort of technology allows you to do that. Send down your fires and waters Go on and rip the sky out But not today Right, so we're in the loft um, it's a pretty tight space up here and I've got cramps so we have to make this pretty quick but this is our 3.6 hybrid inverter so this works the same way as any inverter it converts DC energy into usable AC what a hybrid inverter does is you can have the DC power off the roof go straight into the battery you don't have to convert it back to AC then to DC to store it you can just store it straight in DC so they're a bit more efficient on the battery side the downside of a hybrid inverter is that you need quite a lot of voltage to activate the inverter just to kick on. Um, now the benefit of the system we've got here is because we're using these REA Fusion 2, the 440 watt panels, you're going to get that voltage pretty much straight away. So, you know, we're massive advocates for the microinverter systems and, and definitely massive advocates for the REA panels, especially with the high efficiency they bring. If you're going to install a string, a string system, don't fit it with a cheap panel. Uh, EV Man actually on his own channel has fitted um, a Give Energy hybrid inverter with some cheap panels and he gets pretty average performance out of it. Um, 
we've installed a property, uh, installed some panels on a property around the corner from his house where he's got um, eight panels compared to EV Man's 14 and we're producing more with eight panels than we are with 14 cheap panels. So definitely worth uh, investing in your panels. This is a pretty simple install, pretty straightforward because there's no battery, but I'll just run you through how it's going to work. So the DC is going to come through the um, flashing in the roof that's going to drop straight down. So there'll be two cables because only one string, so there'll be one positive, one negative. They drop into that DC isolator there. Um, that then DC runs into our inverter. So there's your colour in there on the DC cables. DC goes in, converted to AC and comes out here on the AC side of the inverter and that'll go back down to our fuse board. Um, there is also going to be an AC isolator there as well. Later on, if the client wants to add a battery onto this, it's really simple. There's basically Give Energy do a couple of versions of their battery systems. Most suitable for here, probably a 5.2 or 9.5, the Gen 2 batteries. Uh, and they just plug straight into the bottom of the inverter. It's almost like a DIY job, really. It's super simple to do. You need to configure it in the Give Energy app just to let it know it's got a battery as well. Nice, straightforward install, keeps everything out of the way. Benefit of putting this inverter in the loft as well. DC, like we said before, high voltage, it can be dangerous. We've limited the amount of DC cabling on this property because there's only a very short run from the roof to this inverter. We're not running it all the way through the home. The guys are just drilling the panels down now, so it's quite noisy. Just while we've got five minutes where the guys are just putting the panels on the roof, I just wanted to show you the differences between an AC system and a DC system. And largely it comes down to the cabling and the way that the cable or the power comes off the roof. So if you have a DC system, you'll have a cable like this, and this is a single core, double insulated. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? Double core, um, sorry, single core, double insulated, four mil cable. And to install this cable you, and to connect it, you need something called an MC4. And that's that clip there. So an MC4 is the industry standard for solar for a connection. To install an MC4, where a lot of people get this wrong, is they don't use a proper crimping tool. So this is the insert that you actually install onto the MC4 and you need a, a proper calibrated crimper to actually install it. Where people have problems with DC and where you get arcing and you do get some sort of sparks and fires when it's installed incorrectly is when people don't use the proper crimping tools. So for a DC system, that's the cabling. You'd have single core, one is positive, one is negative because it's polarity based as opposed to a live and neutral. And this is an AC system. So if you have an M phase micro inverter, you have an AC system. These plug into the inverters and this is the AC connection, 230 volt. And this is now a two core because it's a double insulated uh, inverter. It doesn't need an earth and you've got live and you've got neutral in there. So that's a two and a half mil two core cable. The difference here is that from the panel on an AC system, you're going to convert it from DC on the panel to AC immediately with a DC system that I've just dropped. You're going to bring it down off the roof in DC via these two cables on your MC4s into your inverter. So that's the main difference, just two different solutions. One's a bit safer using the AC system. This one is a bit cheaper to install. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. So inverter is in a loft, we've just taken a look at that. What we need to get down from the loft area is the AC power to power this property. And to do that, we need to run a cable. What's been really useful on this job and we never get on any job is the client had already got a draw wire in the property. So we're gonna be able to connect our cable to that draw wire, fish it through. It means we don't have to pull any floorboards up. We've not got to make any holes to get the cables in. So it's made it super simple, but essentially that AC cable will come down here. That'll drop in into a mini switchboard and that will be powering the property. So time now is half two, panels are on the roof. The guys are just finishing off wiring up the inverter. We reckon in about an hour and a half we'll be live and we should still make the daylight and we'll have the system running. <laughs> so 
So the array is now on. Uh, the guys are just about to energize it. We're about 15 minutes away, but we thought we'd just show you these 440 panels. So what's super interesting about these is they're the same footprint as the standard 420 panel. They're just a higher efficiency cell. So these feature something called HJT cell technology. Basically what that means is it's a more efficient cell. It's a triple layer. So as the sun comes down, obviously UV radiation is super powerful. It doesn't just hit the panel and get absorbed in one go. It's that powerful, it will actually go through the cell. With a HJT cell, you have three layers. So you've got your outer layer, you've got your monocrystalline layer, and then you've also got a wafer thin layer on the back of the actual panel itself. And that's what gives it the high efficiency. Still, a dual sided panel. So still bifacial, still has the clear intersections, and it's still in the same footprint. Now what's really interesting also about REA panels is that they're tested to a positive tolerance. So this is something that's not widely reported in the solar industry, but if you buy a 400 watt panel, what that means generally is it will be tested plus or minus sort of three to 4%. So it could be underperforming and that's how manufacturers get away with claiming higher outputs. With REA, they are all positively tested. So what that means is the absolute minimum in this case is 440 watt on the front side you're not going to get any variance where it could perform under also rea panels are all tested by tuv so it's done in a standardized system and every panel is tested they don't just do sort of uh, samples per batches they test every panel so our four panels, sorry, our eight panels on here now, they're all installed. They're going to get connected to this Give Energy 3.6 inverter. We're going to get that live, we'll show you the app, and yeah, we're all done. Looking good. So another successful install. Now I say this is a bit different because we've done a hybrid system here. If you're looking for a quote for a hybrid system or a microinverter system, then head over to heatable.co.uk. And I would also recommend subscribing to the EV Man channel because we're doing lots of content on this install and its long-term performance down here in Essex.